Morning, everyone. Can we all take a seat, please? The session's about to start. Uh, welcome to the Apache web track. And first up, we have Jim Jagowski with Apache HTTP 2.4, the cloud killer app. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Yes, yes, that's fine. Good, good. I'm not too proud to ask for it. No, that's fine. That's great. OK. Um, Yes, my, my talk would be about Apache 2.4, the, uh, the so-called killer app for the cloud. A little bit about myself. Um, at Apache, I wear a number of different hats. Uh, for the purposes of this particular talk, however, uh, the main hat I'm wearing is one of the, uh, the developers of the Apache HTTPD uh, project. Uh, we were talking earlier about uh, software projects lasting 50 years, and HTTPD is actually a project which has been lasting over 15 or so. Uh, I also serve on a number of other boards, uh, open source related boards, including OSI, the Open Source Initiative, an Outer Curve, and a uh, Marine Council member for Marsic XL. Uh, also because uh, I enjoy a roof over my head, and, and as you can see, I enjoy uh, eating and food, uh, I need to have also uh, an activity which pays the bills, as it were. And I'm very, very lucky to, uh, to work for Red Hat, which uh, allows me to do fun stuff, but also allows me to also continue the, uh, the open source stuff that I do. Um, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you might want to. That's my uh, Twitter hack down there. So what we'll talk about in the next uh, 45 minutes or so um, is basically a, a quick overview of Apache 2.4. Now I realize a number of you most probably have been uh, sat in on Rich's talk uh, yesterday. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details. Uh, basically, um, mostly aspects which are pertinent to this, this discussion. Uh, basically, what are features and enhancements that make Apache uh, you know, specifically cloud suited? Uh, also, some ideas about why cloud, at least in my opinion, kind of like changes the game a little bit as far as what a web server to do, what kind of expectations, what kind of uh, uh, issues and flexibility uh, enhancements are important for the cloud uh, related to the web. Uh, also, we'll talk about some of the, uh, the performance enhancements that we see between 2.2 and 2.4, and I have a, a couple graphs which uh, makes that comparison for you. And then finally, some cloud-specific enhancements mostly related to the, uh, to the proxy server built inside of it. Uh, we're currently at uh, Apache 2.4.4, which is the latest version. It was just released a couple days ago. And the biggest improvements that we had in here, as I mentioned before, were the ideas of uh, increased performance and cloud suitability out there. Some of the major design, design drivers that we had when we were talking and thinking about Apache 2.4 has been, uh, for example, support for asynchronous I.O. Um, without dropping uh, the support for older systems, you know, and older modules and things like that. Not breaking backwards compatibility as much as we could while still ensuring that there was as much uh, asynchronous uh, I.O. as possible inside of, uh, in, the, in there. Uh, also, we wanted to increase the, the number of multiprocessing modules. These are the actual architectures that tell Apache how to grow and scale, how to respond to new requests that are coming in. And so we wanted to add additional features, and we added the event MPM, which was introduced in 2.2, but was considered experimental. We also wanted to leverage uh, higher versions and higher performant versions of APR. APR is the Apache Portable Runtime, and it's sort of like the, uh, the, the POSIX layer between Apache and, and the underlying operating system itself. Uh, APR is also in uh, Subversion, for example. It's just a nice way of having a unified programming interface for the underlying operating system. Okay, so some of the things that are new inside of Apache 2.4, and as I mentioned, again, I'm not going to go into a, a lot of detail about these, uh, but basically now uh, bandwidth control is now standard. There is a standard module called mod rate limit, which allows you to determine and control just simply how quickly you want Apache to pass those packets, you know, down to the, to the end client out there. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're doing things like a quality of service uh, adjustments and things like that, that's an important to you. That capability had been around for a while, but it wasn't uh, natural and native to, to Apache. It was available in third-party modules. Also, we figured out that the, uh, the need, the requirement for finer level control over uh, timeouts 
was very, very important. You want to be able to have smaller control over the first packet coming in, when, you know, how long to wait for a full request and things like that. And so mod request timeout. Again, leveraging the, the power of the, the modules inside of Apache, we have a module that allows this kind of capability out there. Also, uh, instead of having to uh, worry about seconds, you can relate these down to milliseconds, for example. So again, it gives you finer control with smaller time frames to look at. Rich also talked uh, yesterday about the, uh, the, the better uh, logging capability, including the new trace levels, which allow you as an administrator to figure out what's going on behind the scenes inside of Apache 2.4 without uh, having to worry about slogging through enormous amounts of data inside of your error log out there. Uh, there's also uh, some uh, if uh, uh, per request uh, capability, which is sort of like a, a nice alternative to, to mod rewrite. And we have a, a, a memory, a shared memory capability that's used by a number of different modules out there. Also, when thinking about uh, you know, performance and how to uh, better manage that, you want to have some kind of control over the buffering of input-output, how much goes directly on the wire, how much gets buffered internally, where that buffering goes, and things like that. So we have a, uh, a module specifically located to that as well. Again, to provide you the, the flexibility to make that kind of determination on your own. Uh, another feature that uh, is really, really cool, and I wish we just had more time to, to focus on it, was uh, having the, the Lua programming language uh, actually in server, in the same way that Mod Perl puts Perl inside the server, and Mod PHP puts PHP inside there as well. Lua is a, is a great language, and having it inside there would, um, would really have a lot of you know, really cool capability and flexibility. If you're so inclined after the talk, maybe give it a try, look at it. Uh, we really would like uh, much more feedback associated uh, with that as well. Um, and as I said before, the two big things that we're looking at were the event NPM, which is really uh, well-tuned in, in better leveraging the asynchronous model that's now inside of a, a Apache, um, and then the whole proxy improvements, the capability that, and the knowledge knowing that Apache 2.4 is used in a lot of areas as a front end to a remote uh, back-end cluster. And so these are the features that I think in general is, uh, is really, really crucial to Apache uh, you know, in the cloud environment. And there's some FUD out there. As I mentioned before, uh, Apache is very, very old. And there's this growing um, uh, more and more vocal uh, uh, viewpoint that Apache's old school, that if you want to be cool and hip, you've got to go with somebody else because Apache is really, really bad. Uh, and these are some of the, the, the generalized claims you see about Apache. First of all, that it doesn't scale, that it's very, very slow. If you haven't seen this, uh, this YouTube video out there, I really encourage you to, to, after the fact, or even right now, if you want to copy and paste, uh, well, you can't copy and paste virtually, I guess, so. But uh, to, to really take a look at it, um, it's really, really fun, and it just basically tries to get around that, that misconception that Apache doesn't grow and, de and doesn't scale. Another problem, another uh, error that you see a lot of people saying is that Apache is too general. There, Apache can do too much, as if that's a bad thing. And I kind of like relate this to the idea about, you know, you look at man as an animal as compared to a tiger. A tiger is very, very specialized. It can run faster than a man. It could, you know, attack a deer better than a man all by himself. But the nice thing about the human, the human being, is that he is generalized. He is able to come up with technology and features and things that allow him to override and do better than creatures that are more specialized. So at least in my opinion, being generalized is not a bad thing, unless, of course, it results in something which is very, very bloated, you know, which does too many things for you. One of the nice things about Apache is the module structure. So by uh, limiting the number of modules that you're including in, you can really fine tune that exactly to your environment. Another common um, complaint is that the Apache config file is too complex. And my only response to that is, if that's your only complaint, you're really pulling at straws here. I mean, it's, it's, okay, it's not the best config file in the world, not the best layout, but you've got to do better than that. And finally, the idea that Apache is just too old, that you've got to be cool and hip. Now, David Cross, that's who the guy is right there, he's one of my favorite comedians. And he does this bit about squaggles. And the idea is that here are bagels. They're old school, okay? But this company came out with something called Square Bagels. Okay, they're bagels, 
but they're square. And those are the bagels for the hip, new, young generation, okay? Don't, use your, don't eat your old man's bagels, man. Try the new bagels, the square bagels, okay? Really? Is that the best you can come up with? Yeah, Apache's old, okay? But it has, does have the chaotic capability. And just remember, there are other old technologies that people are move, using, J Linux, for example. So what is it that, at least in my opinion, makes a, a, a killer app for the cloud? Well, for me, there's like five things you really need to focus on. First of all is stability, okay? Obviously, you don't want uh, technology just constantly crashing and things like that. I don't think we need to talk about the very fact that Apache is very, very stable, that the very, very fact that you have all these different uh, NPMs, pre-fork, worker, event, allows you to trade off the risk and the performance capability. Flexibility, talked about that already. Don't need to go into a lot of detail. Performance and dynamic configuration are two new things in Apache 2.4 that I think are really well suited to what makes Apache this, uh, this performance killer app. And finally, the, the awareness that resources are, uh, are, are precious commodities, whether it's RAM, whether it's uh, you know, CPU cycles and stuff like that. You can no longer worry about, ah, I'll just put it in a buffer someplace and not worry about the memory it takes. So my, my idea is that in general, the cloud makes the whole idea of what a web server performance should be very, very different from what it used to be, okay? In the old days, it was very, very difficult and painful to horizontally scale. You know, if you had uh, an increased number of requests coming in, then adding new servers at the same level, horizontally scaling, was very, very difficult. You needed to allocate a new server, you needed to install the operating system, you needed to copy things over. There were manual intensive things to worry about. The cloud makes that not as painful as it was before. Okay, so let's not worry about issues and concerns about horizontal scaling now because that's what the cloud is supposed to magically worry about. Now with that, with that you know, as a, as a you know, assumption, the idea of concurrency being the main problem, the main issue, the main currency you need to worry about in web servers, I think it's not the sole consideration anymore. It's still a major problem, it's still a major consideration out there, but it's not the primary one, at least in my opinion. I think right now the web allows a, 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 a website administrator to really worry about the user experience. And what the user experience is worried about is how quickly do I get that, that website up? How quickly do the images pop up? How quickly does the HTML pop, pop up and stuff like that? And that all comes down to the time frame associated with the request response cycle and the latency involved inside there. How quickly after I send the request will the web server send the content back to me and how quickly I can get that, okay? Now, of course, does density still matter? Does concerns, cons currency still matter? Of course it does, okay? There are gonna be cases out there where obviously concurrency is the main issue, and you wanna make that sacrifice. You wanna have a somewhat slower site, in quotes, uh, and you wanna be able to handle much more concurrency issues. But as Theo said yesterday, okay, when you start talking about uh, platforms and environments which are that complex, that scalable, with that kind of concurrency issues, Chances are very good that, first of all, your web server is not going to be your single main choke point. There are other issues you need to worry about, okay? And also, relook at your architecture anyway. Chances are very good that there's a different architecture or a different design aspect that you could look at, which would make at least some of that problem go away out there. So with that in mind, I thought I'd do a benchmark comparison between Apache 2.4 and Nginx. Okay, why Nginx? Everybody talks about it. In every article, you know, blog post you see, it's always Apache versus Nginx. And there's a lot of information out there and a lot of misinformation out there about that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, so what I did is I did a, you know, a, a simple little benchmark. Excuse me. I used the, uh, the, the latest development version back then at the time. So I did this uh, about a month ago. Uh, well, it had been continually going on since, I guess, OSCON or so. So this has been an ongoing effort. So there's been a lot more benchmark results. Um, but I used uh, the latest development version of Apache 2.4.4 dev um, and the latest stable uh, production version of Nginx, which at the time is 1.2.6. I think that still might be the case to, today. Uh, because I was looking at, uh, you know, development production environments, uh, previously I had just done it on Fedora. You know, but now I decided, now I'm going to look at doing it under on uh, you know, CentOS 5. 
You know, most people in production environments are using it. If I could have grabbed RHEL, I would have done that as well. Um, because, uh, you know, uh, you know do using dual cores and stuff like that is also an issue, and that's been a concern on some of the previous benchmarks. I made sure that we had a multi-CPU machine, um, a modest amount of memory, and I also looked at different architectures, doing tests both in the loopback situation as well as external with firewall. So this is basically uh, a, a quick graphic of what kind of tests I did. Uh, the first setup and the first suite of tests were basically the, uh, the, the test machine running on the exact same machine that was running Nginx and HTTPD. And so basically all the requests were going over the loopback interface, you know, so trying to like avoiding the, uh, um, the worries about the, uh, the network socket layer. Uh, the second aspect was actually the next logical step is moving the test machine external. And so you're talking over, uh, you know, a, a traditional TCP IP socket to a single server running, um, you know, Nginx and Apache, a front end. I also looked at a more common use, which actually has the front end being a reverse proxy to a back end server. And to kind of like make things as simple as possible, I had the back end proxy server just be an Nginx server. Okay, so the only variable was you'd have the request coming in, either going to Apache and then to Nginx and back, or to Nginx to Nginx and back. Okay, trying to look at all the different ways and scenarios that people actually use the web servers out there. Okay, so those were the, uh, the scenarios. Okay. Um, also, it, it, it was important to make sure that I used a whole bunch of, well, not a whole bunch, I mean two isn't a whole bunch, but it's a, it's a more than one different um, benchmarking scenario. And so I used Flood, which is an Apache project, uh, and HTT Perf, uh, Perf performance uh, with uh, different levels of concurrency mod modules, uh, different va values and factors and things like that, and ran these performance tests through all those different scenarios out there. Um, and you can see the, the, the values that I use if you want to go and recreate the, uh, the scenarios yourself out there. Um, because I didn't want to worry about things like um, uh, content negotiation, I made sure that all the requests were for full, were for, uh, full uh, URLs. Just basically, I made the request for slash index.html, not just www.test.com slash, because you don't worry about the internals in that side there. Um, at the time, we didn't look at using dynamic content. I wanted basically just to see how quickly uh, these, uh, these processes and these servers could push the packets out, could access the data and push the packets out, and not worry about the, the externals of what you're doing when you're generating dynamic content, even though that is a, um, a topic for, for later benchmarking tests, okay? And I also tested all the main Apache uh, MPMs. I did these tests for pre-fork, I did the test for worker, and I did the test for, for event. And the other thing is I really didn't spend a lot of time doing excessive tuning, okay? Uh, there's certainly a lot more that I could do to pull more performance out of HTTPD, certainly a lot more that I could do to pull out of Nginx, okay? And we'll talk about why that's actually not a bad thing that I did that a little, in, a, in a few slides later on. But the idea was again, okay, just assuming a normal everyday scenario, mm -hmm. how do they compare? Okay, so this is the, uh, the very, very first one. These are flood results right here. And on the, uh, on the top, you can see the Nginx performance side. Okay, and we're looking at basically uh, the time frame it takes as you're increasing concurrency for things like open of the socket, how long it took for you know, the, the front end to open the socket to the, to the server, to write the request, to the read the response, and then close the socket. So we're looking at the full request response time frame associated with a single request. And as you can see, the values are, are, are very, very low for, for Nginx and the, uh, the event MPM. We're talking about basically the same, similar kind of performance, no real uh, you know, differences between the two. You can see there's some jaggedness associated with them. So if what you're worried about is not only uh, you know, a, uh, a low latency period, but also um, a re a reproducible request response, knowable request response, I know that at, at this time frame, I'm gonna get this request back. You can see that both Nginx and, um, and the uh, Ent MPM have some fuzziness inside there, okay? You're gonna get very, very quick responses back, but they might fuzz out a little bit. 
Now, looking at the worker NPM, you can see that the, the fuzziness associated with, uh, with Apache is, is, is even worse. Okay, even though uh, the total time frame it takes to send the request response time frame is about the same, you know, in general between the two, um, your unknown factor in using the worker NPM is very, very different, okay? What I thought was really, really interesting was the pre-fork NPM. And of course, knowing, you know, looking after it uh, wasn't so much, it shouldn't have been surprising to me that the results came the way they did. Um, as you can see, the knowable factor as far as how long it takes to have the request response is very, very consistent as you increase the, the concur concurrency uh, inside there. And of course, that makes sense because you have a dedicated process specifically focus on that single uh, uh, request coming in. So you don't have to worry about context switches and things like that, you know, as you're going from, you know, going polling or for uh, you know, event switches and things like that. It's much more consistent out there. You also notice that in general, the performance is pretty much the same looking at the request response cycle. Uh, a different way of looking at those, uh, those uh, values are just looking at the, um, the time frame for simple opens you know, again, through Nginx and all the other different um, uh, MPMs out there. And again, we'll, we're focusing on there's none really out of bounds with the other. You know, there's no uh, simple MPM or Nginx significantly better or significantly worse. Um, we're just looking at the fuzziness factor more than anything else is sort of like a, a really interesting thing. So focusing on uh, write and the read. And finally, the total request response time. And this, this is just a different way of looking at the same data, showing that in general, if you want a consistent, uh, you know, knowable pattern as far as handling static content, then pre-fork pretty much gives you that. Of course, you don't get that for free, but if that's what's important to you, um, then that's a really, really good time frame. Um, if you're much more worried about concurrency and stuff like that, you can see that uh, uh, Vent is a pretty good NPM, gives similar performance with Nginx, and somewhat more consistent um, time frames associated with that. This is a different way of looking at uh, uh, the, the data uh, using a uh, different uh, benchmarking uh, mechanism. And this is the HTTP uh, perf uh, benchmark right here. And you'll see that, well, again, we have the very, very bottom uh, level showing increasing uh, concurrency. So uh, as we're increasing the concurrency, we're looking at basically the, uh, the total time taken, minimum, average, max, and the standard deviation. And I think the standard deviation for me is the, most, uh, is the most useful one because it really shows how consistently you can trust your website to have consistent performance, okay? You can, uh, again, optimize to have that nice, consistent user experience. And again, you'll see that in general, there really aren't that many differences out there as far as performance is concerned. Okay, things are, are pretty much the same, you know, the same market. Even as you're increasing concurrency, which has you know, always been Nginx's big claim is that it's very, very uh, uh, you know, able to handle high levels of concurrency, much more so than Apache. Apache would fall down. You're seeing as, as we're doing that, we're not really seeing those kind of results, at least in the benchmarks that we're talking about right here. I think it's very, very, uh, very, very interesting information out there. Now, because these were me running tests and because I do wear uh, an Apache hat, um, obviously, Anything that I propose is going to be seen with skepticism, as, as it should be, okay? Um, back when I originally did the original uh, benchmarks, um, there was a, uh, an email thread on the, uh, the HTPD developers list about someone else who ran their own different uh, uh, benchmarks uh, out there. And you can see that this is, uh, this is his response, this is his um, results right here. And you can see, in his case, um, the event MPM was actually better as far as concurrency concerned than engine than engine x was at least in this test frame on his test environment it was you know it was better but better is always a subjective term we'll talk about that there are caveats associated with this but i just wanted to let everyone know that don't think that apache can't hold up to the big guys, okay? So this is just another uh, independent uh, uh, check mark, as it were, of comparisons between Apache uh, and, and Nginx, okay? So in general, you know, looking at the, what I consider the, uh, the results of these benchmarks, okay, uh, events, polling, uh, forks, spawns, and things like that, okay, that creates overhead, okay? You've gotta worry about that, okay? 
Obviously, the design is that you get more bang for the buck. That's what they're designed to do, okay? But it can be bad for performance for that specific request. If you boil everything down to what is, is important uh, being the, that particular request, that request is fighting for resources for the other requests that are coming inside there, okay? Um, for concurrency, uh, the event NPM, the worker NPM, are pretty much on par with Nginx. Uh, for transaction speed, pre-fork is a, is a really, really good design. Now, the main consideration, of course, is that at, in, during these tests, Apache was never resource-starved, okay? If Apache gets resource-starved, okay, and, and, you know, Apache still uses, you know, uh, has a higher memory footprint than Nginx does, then obviously performance is going to go way downhill quickly, okay? There's no way around that. We realize that. Um, we'll talk a little bit later on about ideas that we have in addressing that and solving that, okay? But again, we're talking about the cloud here, where maybe because of the, the flexibility of horizontal scaling, you might want to put up with that. You, know, you might want to make that, uh, that trade-off out there, okay? If memory is a scarce resource, okay, Nginx is, is a great alternative, as are a whole bunch of other ones out there. Apache Traffic Server, again, is a fantastic, uh, uh, you know, highly concurrent, uh, very uh, lean, mean uh, web server out there. Another thing that I think that is important with the, uh, the cloud is the whole dy uh, idea of dynamics, okay? The cloud uh, is constantly changing. You know, you're adding, uh, you're constantly spinning up new servers, getting rid of new servers, servers go away, okay? Your web server needs to be aware of that. It needs to have that factored in at, at the core, okay? So we, we always prided ourselves inside of Apache on our reverse proxy capability. We always thought it was really, really good. But we realized that nowadays those proxy capabilities need to be more cloud friendly, more dynamic aware, uh, and be able to basically uh, live in a cloud environment with the kind of features that sysadmin want, okay? I won't go into a lot of detail about what the proxy server is because that's, you know, if you've seen other uh, presentations of the proxy, um, it's a, uh, you know, pretty much the same. What's, uh, what's important to realize is that there is load balancing, clustering, and failover built into it, okay? So that stuff is, is, is new, is not new. It's been with Apache for, for quite a long period of time. There have been different ways of, uh, of adding that in there, okay? So we have specific modules that do this sort of like load balancing and stuff like that out there. Um, basically, a, a quick uh, look at it is that, as you can see, for Apache, you can front end not only HTTP traffic, but also traffic like AJP, uh, fast CGI, and stuff like that with a single uh, uh, unified interface, a, u a unified command structure out there. So you see in this particular scenario right here, uh, Apache is front ending a couple of Tomcats on the back end talking AJP, as well as uh, several uh, PHP servers uh, out there as well. And you can see that we have uh, different load factors and stuff like that. We have one on a hot standby status, which sees, uh, says that that server won't be used unless all the other ones are down. Okay. One of the things that uh, we look at in, in um, you know, cloud type of environments is that you front end a lot of reverse proxies. Now, traditionally, the way to do that is that you would have to have inside of your config file a uh, virtual host for every you know, uh, proxy you're looking at. So right here, we're seeing uh, we're front ending www.example.com all the way down to www, you know, 6,341, okay? Each one with its, uh, you know, uh, back end that uh, is the reverse proxy in there. This is painful to do. Uh, obviously, it's not dynamic. If you need to add or delete uh, any back end servers, you need to change the config file and do a graceful restart, which is ugly. So we created this module, which basically abstracts that out into a DB file. So inside this DB file, you basically have the name of the virtual host that you're front ending and the place that it goes to on the back end. Uh, and so as a request comes in, Apache checks this DB file, sends the request out, and sends it back, okay? It's very, very, very fast. It's very dynamic. You can just change the DB file um, in real time and then add and remove as needed. Very, very cool feature, okay? Another feature that was uh, added is the whole idea of a heartbeat and heart monitor. Um, it uses multicast to be able to send information back between Apache at the front and Apaches on the back end. Those are, it, that is the requirement, is it's Apache to Apache. It provides not only a heartbeat are you there signal, but also some levels of performance. You know, these are my, uh, my loads and stuff like that. This is how busy I am, okay? Obviously, in a lot of environments, especially cloud environments, you're not allowed to use multicast, so they may not be a, a, a viable option for you. 
And what we did do to try to make some sort of generic uh, solution for this is we added to mod header, which allows you to you know, add in uh, uh, request and response headers from Apache, uh, values of server load, um, as well as percentage of busyness and percent of idleness inside of Apache. Um, so uh, when Apache sends a response back to the front end server, it can also, as part of that request, say, um, my load average is, you know, 0 0.5, and 30% of my, um, my entities are busy, okay? Unfortunately, right now, there's no load balancing method which uses that, although we'd like to add that. But the problem is, is that there's really no universal measurement of load between web servers. And so for this kind of idea to really take on, to be able to have, uh, you know, uh, Apache front end, anything on the back end, uh, in a real dynamic load balancing factor, it would be nice to have some sort of uh, agreed upon value of what a load of a web server is. And so we might try to start um, creating that, uh, that community around that kind of concept out there. I think the biggest, coolest feature is something which is really brand new in 2.4, which is the idea of the balancer manager. It's, a, it's an embedded proxy web administration uh, module, which allows for not only real-time monitoring of how Apache is handling those backend servers, but also allows you to adjust those parameters out there as well, okay? It allows for new uh, modules and nodes to be added in. It allows you to, to change those parameters as well, and it's persistent. Okay, you can actually change, turn off the server, turn it back on again, and you'll see the results, okay? The result is very, very easy to do. Now, I actually, this is what it looks like, but I'm actually gonna go and throw caution to the wind and actually do a live demo right here. So, um, let's first of all go to, uh, as you can see, uh, the website is not up. So Apache's not running on my local machine, it's trying to access the balancer manager, and it's, and it's not working, so. Okay, I have Apache started up. It's creating some, uh, some workers on the end of it. As you can see, I haven't quite, uh, you know, got everything defined right here. But anyway, now let's go ahead and we now have Apache up and running. So you can see that I've created this, basically this backend cluster back here called ApacheCon NA13, and it's got uh, two servers on, on the back end. Oh, that's really, really great, but let's say right now I don't want to worry about load balancing by, by traffic right here. I actually want to change by, by requests. So I go to the website, I submit, and, and now I'm now changed it by, by requests. Okay, so now real-time Apache will no longer be tracking uh, the number of, of packets which are going back and forth. It'll be looking at the raw number of requests coming in. And now what I also want to do is add uh, a new server. And there it is right now. Now all of them, uh, automatically Apache is now aware of a third element of that cluster up there called Apache NA13 and we'll start sending traffic to there as well. That's all well and good, okay? But what happens if, for example, um, this server goes down, okay? So now let's kill the server, okay? Let's go back over here and, you, and let's try to restart and you can see that Apache's down now, okay? So obviously we're not, there's no funny business going on, okay? Well, let's start it back up again and see what, uh, what uh, operating parameters the, uh, the web server is gonna be worrying about. Okay, you can see that we're back again to buy requests, which is the change we made previously, and it's still aware of that node that we just added in. So even as Apache would, would, would go down, even as you need to change the requirements and set it like that, those changes are persistent. So once you make that change, and it can be by the web face or you know, by a, a command line interface or something like that, or even some kind of, you know, automatic autonomous uh, mechanism that says, oh, okay, I'm sensing there's, you know, too much traffic on these nodes, I'm gonna fold somebody else in, those changes are persistent, which I think is very, very crucial for, um, for any sort of like, a, you know, cloud environment out there. It's not only being able to ha have dynamic change, but have those changes be consistent. Okay, so in conclusion, um, and I hopefully we have some time to have some Q&A, okay. The performance of Apache 2.4 is, you know, really still in, in the big leagues, okay. Um, 
please don't just look at benchmarks and make a decision on that, okay? Uh, th th you know, there are environments where Nginx makes sense, Apache Traffic Server makes sense, Apache makes, uh, uh, makes sense, okay? Be smart and intelligent about making those decisions out there. Uh, the architecture of Apache 2.4 really allows for a lot of flexibility and growth. If you were at the Mod Speedy uh, talk yesterday, um, you saw that he was able to actually cram Apache to do something which it really wasn't designed to do. It was pretty, you know, pretty amazing out there. There's still a, you know, a large category of edge cases where you need to use different technologies. Be sure to use them. Don't be holding to a specific, uh, specific technology because everybody's talking about it. Do your, do your research and stuff like that. And of course, lies, damn lies, and uh, statistics and benchmarks are things that shouldn't be trusted, okay? Um, that's it for the end of my slides. These will be on SlideShare later on uh, today. Uh, I think we might have maybe five minutes or so for, for questions. So if you have any, please, uh, please come on up. Hi, Jim, thanks. Um, in, a, in a cloud environment, I, I often pay for CPU, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did you take a look at CPU when you're doing any of your benchmarks? I know it was outside of the scope of what you were looking for, but did you see uh, comparisons between Apache and Nginx? Yeah, the question was uh, during the um during the test, were there uh, differences uh, uh, between the, the CPU utilization, you know, for all the different tests out there? And it really depended on the operating system, okay? Uh, I, I did tests on CentOS, Fedora 18, and OS, uh, Mac OS 10. Uh, OS 10, there were differences, and, and Apache used, um, uh, you know, a, a higher by maybe 15, 20 percent. Okay, well, on CentOS and Fedora, really no difference at all between the two. Uh, in, in general, the, the CPU utilization was pretty much the same. Um, the pre-fork had a little bit more CPU utilization, though. In, in general, the event had the less. So, so the trade, so the uh, the um, you know that that was the uh, the trade-off. You know, you get really really quick uh, request response, but you know you you have got to put up with uh, more memory, more CPU. Great, thanks. Sure. Hi. Um, so in your benchmarks about trying to uh, relate the server architecture to the user experience, um, I kind of feel like um, you missed the largest component of user experience, which is actually not server performance. It's, it's how the front end is, is designed, what the images look like, how the HTML is arranged, and what order things go in, mm -hmm. and how that relates to the server performance. Yeah. Um, so I feel like um, the HTTP, HTTP perf uh, benchmarks are great, but if you want to look at what the users will experience, try a web page test, which will actually render pages in browsers from distant locations and show you what uh, videos of the page actually transpiring. And I think that if you do that, you'll see that Event and Nginx are pretty good, and that's where pre-fork tends to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, unless you can turn on Keep Alive and then you have memory issues. So mm -hmm. kind of from my perspective, if you want to look at end user performance and latency, the most important thing you can do in the web server is turn Keep Alive on. And um, the next most important thing that you can do, assuming that you have caching headers and, uh, and you're compressing all your content, is make sure that your images and the architecture of your HTML is... Uh, is optimal, and that's why I'm going to plug my lightning talk uh, uh, the, this evening for my page feed. Yeah, I mean, it, it, certainly I, I agree. I mean, I did simplify the, uh, the, the benchmark, you know, to, to basically uh, have a particular area that I was focused in. Um, user experience and what creates a, a, a viable, acceptable, fun user experience is, you know, obviously there are tricks that you can do. You can have, you know, you can turn on my gzip, you know, and, and, and compress that. Uh, you can use the other technologies out there as well. Um, my, my main focus, my main concept was that, okay, um, you know, a, as you're looking at it, how quickly does the web server respond, okay? Without looking at uh, the other aspects out there, but certainly I do agree that uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, you know much more complicated. Um, I want to add one more thing, which is that um, I can I'm not trying to I, I don't disagree with your conclusion. I think Apache uh, can be configured into a very performance solution, particularly with Event MPM, and actually having worked on getting our module working in Nginx and um, and of course it was originally in Apache. Mm -hmm. um, 
they're not as different as you would think. When we, first, when we unpeeled what was under Nginx, it looked a lot more Apache-like than we expected. So I think it's, I think it's not that surprising that the, that the benchmarks, at least for event, right. are kind of comparable. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a, a, you know, a, a really unknown secret that really Nginx is a fork of Apache 1.3. If you look at it, you know, a lot of the structures, the pull mechanism, the request mechanism, and stuff like that, uh, it, it really has that, that heritage inside there. Of course, it's a severe fork. I mean, it's gone, you know, really away. And it's a great design. It's a great architecture. Don't get me wrong. We wouldn't be focusing on, on event and asynchronous NPMs if there wasn't a, um, a, a, a market, an environment that, uh, that required that kind of environment out there. My point was just that there's a lot of solutions out there. And the, you know, the old horse still has some kick in it. I think we're, we're done. I will be here for the, uh, for the rest of the conference. If you have any, any questions, debates, if you want to hit me in the head with a brick, that'd be fine as well. Thank you, everyone. Have a great conference.